Hey, hey everyone, hope all is good with you. In this episode, I will show you how to jump and jump differently, jump with different heights depending on how long you keep holding the jump button. Uh, for this episode, I will be using the free game platform game assets from Biot Games just to make things look a little bit better. To make this kind of jumping, you can use different approaches. One is perhaps to jump after the player has released the button. So he presses the jump button, then charges a jump, and depending on how long it took for him to release the jump button, the player jumps higher. This is more like some kind of uh, charging jump, and this is not the approach we will be using. For instance, in Mario, the player, the character, starts jumping the moment the player uh, presses the jump button. So he doesn't ever wait for the release of the jump button. But the, the height is still determined by how, how long the player kept pressing the jump button. Um, so to do this, I have just imported a few sprites from the free platform uh, asset to try things up. Um, let's start with setting this to fully erect. And make it tileable like this. So now we have a ground to stand on. And let's give it a rigid body. Set it to the static. Add a collider. You can see that the collider is only the size of the original box. Since we made it tileable, we have to adjust the collider as well. Let's see how big it is. The collider is 30 to 10. Let's set the collider to 10 as well. There you go. Now they are the same size. Okay, our platform is ready. Let's drag our play inside. Let's just take one of the um, images, sprites, not the entire animation. Put him here. Let's call him player so that it makes things easy for us to keep track of. Um, add a component on him, rigid body. Set it to dynamic because we want him to be affected by physics. Add a collider on him as well. Let's make it a capsule collider for him. More like a circle because he's so small, but it doesn't really matter. We can Constrain the Z axis so that he won't start rolling away. And then we can start play to see that he actually lands on the platform. Oh, great. So now for the actual jumping, how will we approach this? How will we do actually make him jump different heights depending on how long he's keeping jump around? Well, for this, we will be using the gravity scale. The gravity scale is just a factor on how much this gravity project settings, the um, global gravity, will uh, affect the player or this rigid body. If it's one, then it's only one and he will be falling down. If it's zero, then there's no gravity affecting the player and he will float. You can test it just so you can see. Now he won't fall down. Okay. And if we drag it up, he will fall. And if we put it to negative, he will fly. Like that. So we will be using the gravity scale to make him jump higher if we kept pressing the jump button. So let's create a new script. C sharp, call it jump height. Attach it to the player. And move into it. All right. Um, so let's start by removing these. We don't need them. We only need one variable to begin with to determine the jump force. So let's call it private float jump force equals to let's say five, and make let's make it serializable so that we can change the value in the inspector. And let's make an update method. 
In this update method, we will listen for a key input. Let's listen for a jump action. So if input get key button get button down and then jump. There is a default action in Unity called jump, and it is a default map to the space button. If we're pressing the space button to jump, we will set a variable press no, yeah, press jump equals to two. Let's create this variable like so and set it to false to begin with. The default for a boolean is false, but I like to explicitly set the value. It makes things more clear. So now we have a jump. Now we're changing this boolean to two when we're jumping. Now we can do the actual jumping. I do the inputs in the update method, but I do the we'll be doing the jumping in the fixed update because it's physics related. Fixed update. So if pressed jump, if we have pressed jump, then we will start jumping. Let's create this method. All right, and how do we jump? The only thing we need to do is add a force to our rigid body. And to do that, we need a reference to our rigid body. Private, rigid body. And then in the awake method, we can get a, a reference to it. Get component, rigid body. And back in the start jump, add force new vector 2. We don't want to add a force to the x direction, so we set the first field to 0, and then we set the second, the y direction, to jump. Then we want this to be an impulse force mode dot impulse. All right, and then we need to reset the press jump button. Set it back to false so that we can, so we're not infinitely jumping. So let's try this out. You can see when I press space, he will jump, and if I press space multiple times, he will keep jumping up. That's because we are not checking if he's grounded, touching, touching the ground. I have made an other tutorial for that, so I will just skip it in this one and focus on the jumping. Okay, let's jump back into the code and now we can start listening on for another input uh, currently we're just checking if we have pressed the button but we need also check when we are releasing the jump button so if input dot get button up this time same button jump button then we can set another variable released jump equals to 2. So let's create it. Set it to false. Move it up to the other one to make it look nicer and structured. So when we have released jump, what will we do then? And if released jump Similar to starting jump, we will now be stopping the jump. Okay, let's create this method as well. Let's move it below this to keep the structure. So how will this start jump and stop jump work? Well, we were talking about the gravity scale. So when we're starting to jump, we can actually set the gravity scale to zero. Here. What happens when we apply a force to something that has zero gravity? Well, it will keep moving in the force direction uh, indefinitely until another force is applied on it. So, when we're having a gravity scale and apply the jump force, it will keep going up until we decrease the, uh, increase the gravity scale again. And when will we be increasing the gravity scale? When, when he's stopping to jump. So here, you can set the gravity scale 
to gravity scale like that. Now we can create this variable here. We can move it up so, and make it serializable so that we can change it in the inspector. And we set the default value to 1 to begin with. All right. And then in the stop jump, we also need to set the release jump back to false. Let's see if this is working. I press play. Now if I press space and hold it, you can see that he will go up and then I release it. He will fall back down. If I press it fast, he will jump and keep coming down, uh, going down. Now you can see that depending on how long I'm holding space, he's jumping different heights. Uh, but is this really what we want? Mm, in Mario, for instance, he can't jump infinitely, infinite height. Um, there is a limit to how high he can actually jump, and we will also impose such one such limit. So let's jump back and create another variable. Actually, we need three variables. We need to make a timer. So that after a certain amount of time, we enforce the release of this jump button. So let's create private boolean start timer to determine if we should start the timer. Private start timer. Private float uh, jump timer to determine how long we are. Um, allowed to keep holding this uh, jump button and set it to 0.5 begin with. Let's make this one serializable. Huh. So that we can change it in the inspector. And I like to keep my serializable fields uh, gathered, so I will move it up there. And then finally, we need another float variable that keeps track of the actual timer. In the wake method, we will reset the timer equal to the jump timer. And now, in the update method, we need to check if we should start the timer. If start timer, then we will uh, start uh, decreasing the timer equals minus equals to time dot delta time. Let's keep it like this for you now. When should we start this timer? Well, we will start it as soon as we have pressed the jump button down. So when we have, or we will start it as soon as he has started to jump. So here we can start the timer. Start timer equals to three. So when we have started the jump, we will start the timer and start decreasing it. So and then we'll check if the timer is less than or equal to zero. Then we will enforce the release of the jump. So let's set this to two. If the timer has gone that back gone down to zero. We release the jump by force. And when we release the jump, we will jump into the stop jump method. And here we can reset the timer, jump timer, for the next time we're jumping. And we also need to set the start timer back to false. All right, let's check if this is working. Go back inside of Unity, press play. And now, if I uh, press and hold the jump button, he will go up. But at of the moment, he will come back down, no matter how many time, uh, how long time I'm holding the jump, because we have enforced the timer. And if I just press and release it uh, directly, he will jump lower. Let's adjust the values a bit so that we can show what 
it's a bit um, better. Let's add 3 to the gravity scale. I'll change it to 3 and up the jump force. Let's see what the highest jump with these values are. I will keep holding space, jump it, and he goes up to about there. And if I press and release, he will jump very short. And everything in between, depending on how long I'm holding the jump button. All right, and if you up the gravity scale, you could see that he falls down much faster. And this will make the game move faster and probably more smoothly, fluidly. But it all depends on what kind of game you're making. Play around with these values until it feels good. Perhaps put this down a bit. Yeah. Alright, now you can play around with this. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.